And this morning, Russia says it plans to cut its March oil production by half a million barrels a day in protest over the recent uh, price caps on its petro uh, products. Crude moving higher this morning uh, on the news, but uh, sort of been in a 75 to 80 range. Joining us now is Jeff Curry, uh, Goldman Sachs head of uh, commodity strategy. I like to say commodity, and I, I saw your note, Jeff, and we're talking a lot about metals in, in not Russia, but uh, the reopening of China and the effect it's having. Can we start with how many different groups have totally different fundamentals that are called commodities? So let's, can you go, there, there's, there's oil, obviously, there's grains, there's lumber, there's uh, there's metals. How many have totally different characteristics so that when you say commodity prices, you're really not being clear, specific enough uh, to be able to say what's happening to all of them? How many are there in your view that you follow? I'd say there's just two. There's energy and non-energy. In the way you can think about it and even the way they price, energy or what we call location markets, Cushing, Oklahoma, um, because they're... Uh, essentially very cheap to transport. Think about power. It's really cheap to transport, but very expensive to store. So power is impossible to store except in a battery. Oil is very difficult to store, but it's pretty easy to transport through a pipeline. In contrast, the metals or the non-energy, they're very easy to store, um, but very difficult to transport. They can be need a big truck and you put it on the back and drive it around. So when we think about commodities, it's just those two buckets. And you think about how do metals price? They price in a warehouse. And so that's why we can think of all that stuff you said before is in that non-energy bucket. And then oil, gas, power, coal, all of that sits in the energy bucket. So this is a, a lesson for us that we thought that we weren't by, that Russia was having problems exporting its oil. Anyway, they really weren't. So if they do cut, that makes a difference, right? Yeah, I think with, with the way you can think about what's, what's happening there is the Russian government was not collecting sufficient revenue because they were taxing off euros. And I think a lot of people know that the high cost of transport and everything put a huge discount in the euros price, at which government, the government, the Russian government wasn't collecting enough revenue off. And you can see this by the fact that their stabilization fund couldn't cover costs. And as a result, they were selling RMB to raise cash to cover costs. So what they, one way they did, and they've announced it in their own um, you know, local press, is that they're going to start taxing on Brent minus $20 a barrel, roughly. So what that's doing is taking away profits from the companies. And as a result, they're likely to reduce the output. And it's roughly about 500 our balances had about 600,000 barrels a day, so it's pretty much in line with our expectations. When, uh, since it is so sort of bifurcated, what is the state of, of commodities right now in terms of what it's adding to, to global inflation? Have things eased in terms of, I know certain things are down, natural gas, there, there, there are certain things, but we had PepsiCo on the other day, and they said it's worse than ever in terms of the, uh, the inflation that they're seeing in their input costs. So where, where does it stand I, now? I, I, it, or is the fundamental picture, it is more bullish today than it was at any point since the, this COVID um, um, rebound. Is it going to impact headline inflation? Unlikely. Why? Because you need to think about oil in 2Q of last year was $130 a barrel. So you got a long ways to go before you start to have a significant impact on, on inflationary pressures the way the macro community thinks about it. But that doesn't negate the fact that um, when you look at the underlying fundamentals, they're incredibly tight. And this is the way I think I like to think about it. What was the biggest shock last year? It wasn't Russia. It was China shutting down for COVID reasons. You can think about you know, the demand collapsing in China, creating spare capacity for the entire world to continue to consume commodities. Now, China is going to come back um, you know, over the course of the next um, you know, three to six months. And as they come back, they're going to eat up any of that spare capacity that was created by their drop in demand. That's going to tighten all of these markets. And we, let's ask this question again in six to 12 months. I think it's going to be a very different question. So it, this... There's going to be a bull cycle in, in commodities. Oh, I, it, by the way, our conviction in the bull case has never been stronger. 